part of the Dungeon Crawl Classics Dying Earth box set came with uh, a bunch of adventures that I think go all the way up to level six. And one of those is Dungeon Crawl Classics Pilgrims of the Black Obelisk, which is a level zero funnel for the Dying Earth setting. And I had uh, the privilege, uh, no, the joy of running this for a bunch of DCC newbies at my local game store and we had a blast. So let's talk about this pretty great funnel. Hey everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. Welcome to the Jocular Junction. If you're new here, I talk about uh, RPGs that I very much enjoy and one of them is um, Dungeon Crawl Classics. And specifically, I also really, really like the Dying Earth setting for Dungeon Crawl Classics. And we're gonna talk about uh, Pilgrims of the Black Obelisk. I have a PDF of this, so we're gonna jump over to PDF view and kind of talk about the uh, adventure as a whole. So spoilers for Pilgrims of the Black Obelisk. All right, everybody, here we are. This is Dungeon Crawl Classics Dying Earth Pilgrims of the Black Obelisk. Obelisk, a level zero adventure by Julian Burnick and Mark Brunner. Uh, this was really fun, and I just wanted to talk about uh, how cool I thought it was. So this is kind of off the cuff. I'm just kind of going to talk about my experience with running this. It's not like a big review. Uh, I liked the adventure, so I probably will run it again for other people that are um, a interested in DCC, but also uh, are willing to play around with the Dying Earth setting with me. So we start with uh, an introduction and um, the adventure background. And the adventure as a whole for this, so spoilers, um, is there is a god in the Dying Earth um, that is uh, long gone, but it's uh, Omeyat Ko. Ammon one of his like super devout followers laid down all of the writings of following Omeyat Co uh, in a codex. And the people who follow Omeyat Co have a, a little bit of this codex, but they don't have the whole thing. And they're trying to uh, follow the rules so that maybe one day they can also ascend um, and become, I don't know, go to heaven or something like that. <laughs> so within this world, there is um, this ritual, and, or there's an obelisk, and the obelisk is a holy site for many, many different types of uh, religions or creatures or things like that. And it's this large black obelisk in this city. And every year, a bunch of pilgrims gather together in one area, and they make their way uh, a kind of a pilgrimage to the Black Obelisk, hoping to follow the path set by Omeyat Ko, uh, and then when they get there, they'll, they'll worship him and uh, maybe be ascended up like this um, Ammon character. So through here, we have a Vancian glossary, which gives us kind of um, some more information on the the verbiage and the words that Vancey and Magic, or just Jack Vance comes up with. So lots of, he invents lots of fun words and things like that. So our goal as adventurers is we're going to make a pilgrimage. So here's a little map. Um, all of your players will start at the Inn of the Violent Imp up here in the top right corner, and then they get to choose. Do they want to take the 10-day pretty safe route, but it's going to be 10 days of travel? Do they want to take the seven days? That's a pretty uh, difficult route. Lots of bandits on the road uh, to get there. Or do they want to take the eight days through the woods, which is uh, the happy medium of the two? So there's some replayability here. Not um, not everything will be, like there's always going to be an F um, encounter, and you see that they're labeled by the uh, by the letters. There's always going to be this F encounter, but like you get different encounters. So the replayability of this, I think is pretty fun. And then on top of this, you're making luck checks as every day they're going for losing supplies and things like that. So there's a fun mini game of like how many rations and how much other stuff do you have? My players chose to go through the forest. So they did the eight days one. And one of my players randomly had an a 18 in luck and so we actually didn't get into a lot of the random, like you lose all of your rations or things like that because he was very successful with all of his luck checks rolling under his luck. But this is it, you have to travel from here to here. There is a player version of this map, I think. 
maybe. Pretty sure. Yeah, here it is. So there's a player version of this map that is uh, pretty blank, but with this, I could print it out and then I could draw like, okay, you get about, you get about, uh, you know, midway through the, the forest or you get over here, but they can know the general area. We're trying to get to Ezri Damath, which is down here in the silver desert. Um, and you have three possible scenarios to go through. So after stocking up and finding your NPCs, there's a small chance that you could have a fight with a bandit. Um, but other than that, you're gonna start running out into the world. And you have your starting meals and the number of playable characters remaining. This is for um, the, the judge to kind of track and then which way they're going and uh, the gray areas, like when they're gonna start probably like running out of food and stuff or, oh no, that is the gray areas when they should technically arrive at uh, Ezra uh, Demoth. So there's a lot of fun different encounters. Specifically, we did uh, A, D, F, H, and I. Um, and so I'll go through, I think there was one that was really fun. Yeah, so D was really interesting um, because it's a small wooden structure and uh, this weird man that lives up in a tree is asking for like sacrifices. And it says that it could be just about anything. So our party had an extra horse for whatever reason, or the, the DC or the um, dying earth equivalent of a horse, I forget. And we, they decided to offer that up. So the horse got totally sacrificed, but in turn, this guy was like really friendly to them and kind of helped them out. And so that was, Kind of a funny one. There was another one with a, a weird hag that we ran into and had a good time with that. Um, and they were running out here. And then coming further in, there's a section where other pilgrims who are trying to reach the obelisk have ha caught, contracted this weird magical disease where their eyes are um, becoming grown over with like obelisk crystal. And so there's a section where they attack you. And then you have this really weird turn where your players go to sleep and they wake up and there's this like hideous looking devil demon creature that is trying to make a bargain with them. And so in the story, this devil demon creature is uh, hates uh, Omeyat Ko, the, the god, and is trying to like do something to just really make him angry and really like upset him um and so you can make a deal like hey i want to like work for you or i don't want to work for you and that has implications later again the replayability of it is really fun and so you can kind of go off of like uh if i'm chaotic or if i'm this i'm like why am i even here and so different players can make different choices which has an income or an outcome there and then when you get to Ezra de math uh you have a day to kind of not a day but you have like a morning to kind of like figure out uh, what you want to do and, and get resupplied and things like that. And then you actually go to uh, the obelisk for the ritual. And depending on if your players have figured out several clues throughout the adventure, they might be able to finalize um, Ammon's codex that gives you um, all of the information on how to actually complete this ritual and make Omeyatko happy. So the players know this. They know that they shouldn't steal. Like these are the behests of Ammon, um, who was like the prophet of Omeyatko. Um, and then they think that the the actual uh, the actual what is it that I'm thinking of uh, ritual is something about this. And they know this, but then they find a secret codec. And if they decipher this clue, which my players did at the very, very end, like the kind of the last minute they figured it out, then they can um, actually summon Omeyat Ko. And you'll have this big, big, huge battle between this godlike deity and this demon that is also trying to uh, us usurp out. And so for a level zero adventure, like it's like the world is is just going crazy here. And it was super fun. So they figured it out. We had a blast. Uh, nobody ascended, but they all got these fun crystal shards that they were able to use to give them special abilities. So afterwards, um, there's a big like snake thing that shatters into a bunch of different shards and you can pick up these shards. So anybody that was left, this is kind of the the ramifications for that character as they transition to level one. Um, you also have this extra ability. And so I think, yeah, one of them got uh, a plus one AC. 
Um, and then one of them got a very fancy, oh yeah, number five, they get um, basically like a knife that does 2d5 damage, <laughs> but it can cut through anything, so it's kind of crazy. So it was a lot of fun. Overall, I got a little confused with Dying Earth because it's its own setting has all of these rules for money that are Dying Earth money as opposed to regular money. And we were getting a little confused on the conversion and whether the zero level funnel people started with starting gear um, because a lot of them were like, well, I have a horse and I have a chicken, but horses don't really exist in the Dying Earth setting. So it was kind of back and forth. Uh, and then on top of that, I had to remember how much of how much copper is this worth and vice versa um, in a dying earth currency as opposed to DCC currency. So I think if I was going to run this again, I would just remind myself uh, that pregens get their weapon and maybe some armor, but that's it. And I'm going to like leave out some of the extra stuff that they have. And I will also not let them roll for money. Uh but maybe, maybe I would. I don't know. They did a lot of shopping at the beginning of this adventure, and I just find shopping boring, especially when it's a funnel and half of you are going to die, if not more. Up next is the level one DCC Dying Earth uh, adventure called The Laughing Idol of Lairshan. And this is a level one adventure by Julian uh, Burnick, same author as the Pilgrims of the Black Obelisk. And I told all my players who are very excited that, hey, I want to run, um, like you all have these level one characters now, so let's level them up and then we'll run this. Unfortunately, my life got really busy, but uh, whenever I run this, I will be doing another video on it. So again, this is uh, Pilgrims of the Black Obelisk, lots of replayability, super fun. You don't need to be super familiar with Dying Earth in order to enjoy this. And because of the different maps and stuff or the different paths you can take, I think the replayability of this is a lot higher than some others. But you know, if you're into DCC, you've probably ran uh, Sailors on the Starless Sea like 90 times by now. Yeah, we all know you, you love it. You love that zero level funnel. Uh, check it out. I think some of the DCC stuff is really, really great. I'm super enjoying this. And whenever I finish Peril of the Purple Planet, I'm probably going to dive into a longer DCC Dying Earth game. We'll see. That's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next episode. <laughs>